was the district you maintained among the evangelical churches in the Western district? And I've just seen some numbers about this denomination. I don't know whether or not it is so well visible here on this screen. But we see that in many regions there had been, and are there are still, figures of stagnation, whereas one conference, it's the Western Conference here, indicated in red, they increase their, is it membership or is it worship participants? Worship attendance and also conversions. Worship attendance and conversion from originally about 3,000 to now 8,500 in how many years? In, in a 10 year period of time. In a 10 a year period of time, and you have been the district superintendent yes. there. So I would take for granted that something remarkable has happened in this time window. What was it? Well, what really happened is I was passionate about you know, working with the NCD principles that I was introduced to the ABC <coughs> movement in uh, 1998, became district leader in 2000, and I wanted to make that a part of the uh, vision of our conference that we could have healthy, life-giving, prevailing, and multiplying churches. And this seemed to be a tool, and the principles of that really spoke to my heart. So I spent two years just going from church to church, and pastor to pastor, showing DVD clips of what could happen here. And then I came down there for some training to Dave Wexler here in St. Charles, Illinois, and took two pastors with me in 2000. They began to implement it, and churches began to catch on. And uh, as the diagram shows, it took about three to four years for some churches to catch on. We planted in the church about that same period of time, and the growth curve just started to go up. And uh, trained some more people, and more churches caught on. We developed some coaches, and planted some more churches, and uh, we were the least populated part of the United States. <laughs> and have had that phenomenal growth, but other conferences were in larger cities. So what I'm hearing you say is simply this, stagnation and in declines absolutely even in less favorable uh, circumstances context not a fate not a destiny that you have to accept but you can do something about it so in a 10 year period you can see absolutely different numbers yes in the beginning of that time period here's another diagram that will show we had like 200 conversions a year for the first part of the year 2000 2002 and now we have come up to over 1,800 conversions in the year of 2010, and I don't have the statistic for 2011. But from the 200 to 1,800 uh, conversions we had in, in uh, 2010, and over 1,800. And uh, healthy organisms, healthy churches should be reproducing organisms. And uh, we've seen that reality here in our Western Conference. Thank you for sharing. Welcome. Now, I realize that that was a seven-year-old video. I want you to hear what he said, that you do not have to accept decline and stagnation, even in a rural area where it's, the population is very, very separated, rather being dense. So, so what's wrong with the church, folks? What's wrong with it? What's wrong is too often we have the growth potential in all the wrong places. Let me show you the next. Here's a picture sometimes of how we do church. I appreciate your laughter. Because that is a healthy laughter. This is how we do church. And we have to be very careful that we don't continue doing church this way. Can't you hear the guy in the back saying, come on, pull harder. And the guy in the front saying, Come on, push. Would you please push? What is the real problem with this picture? How many of you saw the square wheels? You say, that's just so obvious. That's the point. Sometimes it is so obvious. We miss it. Do you think that the round wheels inside the cart would serve a better purpose on the outside? Yeah. Yes. I mean, wouldn't that make a lot better sense that we would have our cart with round wheels versus square wheels? Sometimes we're doing church with square wheels. Too many times we're doing church 
with square wheels and we wonder why we are so tired. What's right with this church? Let me tell you what's right with it. First of all, Jesus knows the actual condition of his church at 209 Park Lane. I believe I have a good feeling what's going on here. I believe I have a good vision of what's happening. I believe our ministry leaders have a really good feeling for what's happening in Park Lane or not happening. But I'm so thankful that Jesus knows the actual condition of his church at 209 Park Lane. I'm also thankful he wants all of us to know what the actual condition is of this church here at 209 Park Lane. You see, Jesus knows this. Watch. Healthy church grows. Healthy churches grow and they reproduce themselves. Growth isn't an option for a healthy church. It's a responsibility. Healthy churches are not only passionate about growing their church, but they're also passionate about growing other churches. So, just like I was forced to face my actual health condition some 13 months ago, we must face the unhealthy areas and make changes to celebrate our healthy areas. There are arteries, and there are veins, and there are footers, and there are building blocks, and there are roots, and there are limbs of Park Lane that need to be reevaluated, they need to be revived, they need to be reinforced. And again, the best part is 30 hand picked members from among us will become integral part of our natural church development. Some of you will be taking our vitals and recording them. Some of you will become congregational medical assistants. Some of you will set the new path towards healthier people, towards healthier processes, towards healthier purposes inside and outside of our walls. The health test and the proven tools of NCD are designed to track on purpose what they call the minimum factor, which is our weakness and also track the maximum factors, which are our strengths. And how many know this? Like every cholesterol test, both LDL and HDL are important. We like to uh, kind of skirt around the bad one, right? But they are both important for perfect health in our body. The tendency is for most churches to concentrate most of their energy playing to their strengths. So if we are really good at worship, we just keep putting on all emphasis for our worship because we're really good at that. If we're really good at Bible studies and small groups and teaching, we put emphasis on that. Whatever you're strong at, you tend to play to your strengths while mm, skirting around your weaknesses, hoping that they will go away. How many of you know it will never go away? Whichever those levels, HDL, LDL, are up, they will never go away because you try to skirt around them or just ignore them. They will still be there. And how many know they will do damage? Amen. They will eventually do damage. So the tendency is to put energy towards a strength. That's not always healthy. As a matter of fact, it's difficult and in some cases even impossible to continue achieving God's purpose for us here at 209 Park Lane with the organic anatomy of this congregation. If that organic anatomy is sick, we must address the issues. When we take an honest look at the NCD results or the diagnosis of our church, all of us will become more acutely aware of how often we have been ignoring the minimum factor. Just concentrating on our maximum factors will never heal our minimum factor. Let me show you something, illustration. I, I, this is a, so, a powerful illustration. The staves in this water barrel, ministry, worship, structure, spirituality, small groups, evangelism, are parts of this barrel. Worship attendance rises and falls. Ministry rises and falls. Reproduction rises and falls based on not all of the staves. It really is based on the minimum factor. 
How many of you know, no matter how many times I pour this barrel of oil and water, it's going to leak at the minimum factor? Whatever that minimum factor is, is where the water leaks out the quickest. It will never rise above the minimum factor. We can pour all day long. We can pour the whole month long. We can pour the year long. It's never going to rise above the minimum factor. We get our good moments of some splash, but it's going to leak at the minimum factor. So, when we focus on the longest stage, we seek to do it even better than we've been doing, and the church rarely advances over our mission. No matter how many times we fill up this barrel, it will never, it will always fail to hold more water than the minimum factor, the lowest stage. But here's the good news, folks. When we own our weakness, our minimum factor, and we celebrate our strengths, our maximum factor, together we get to find out the better ways how to use our strengths and our weaknesses to address our health condition. The beautiful thing is we can expect with some degree of confidence that God is going to bless in favor because his word works all by itself. It grows. It grows. Now let me quickly conclude with this this morning. There's five reasons I want you to pray about, pray over. Here's five reasons that we have said yes to National Church Development. First of all, because NCD focuses on increasing what? The quality of the church rather than on its numerical growth goal. The emphasis is on church health. It has proven to be the key to ongoing growth and multiplication. That's reason number one. Number two, the center of NCD is the all by itself principle that can be observed in healthy churches around the globe. All NCD principles are answers to the question, how can this God-given growth potential be released? Number three, on all levels of the church life, NCD encourages creativity, authenticity, and diversity. Rather than selling a specific church model, NCD helps Christians and churches to discover and develop their individuality. Number four, please. NCD assists believers in rediscovering the central biblical concepts and how to relate them to their everyday life. This is expressed by the Trinitarian Compass, I'll talk about that more later, which is the heart of all the NCD tools. And then number five, it works. Churches that have done more than three surveys have increased their average growth rate by 51% between the first and the third survey. Why? We plant, we water, and God gives the increase. Now I realize that you have been drinking from a fire hydrant this morning. I realize that. That was a lot to digest. You couldn't possibly digest all of that this morning. I can't either. That's why we're going to break it down and walk through this in the month of September. I'll take my time with it as we prepare ourselves to find out the real diagnosis of Park Lane Church of God. You say, Pastor, why do we got to do all of this stuff? Let me give you one reason this morning. Just one. Just one. Is there any in deceit besides you? Very few of you have to do like this this morning to look up here and see me. Because there's plenty of space in front of you. There's plenty of space beside you. There's plenty of space. There's too much space. Healthy churches grow and reproduce. Growth isn't an option for healthy churches, it's a responsibility. Healthy churches are not only passionate about growing their church, but also growing other churches. I love that principle. So it's time for our next adventure, folks. It really is. It's high time to forever put away those square wheels. And to find every round wheel within our congregation and bolt them, fasten them to this body called Park Lane Church of God. The 12-month adventure will help all of us see increased fruitfulness and inspired fulfillment in what Jesus taught. He said, learn how the wildflowers grow. They do not toil or spin. They grow all by itself. I hope you're as half excited as I am about this diagnosis. 
I wasn't last July excited about hearing the words, you are a very sick man. I didn't want to question the cardiologist, but for a few brief moments, I thought, you got the wrong guy. How do I walk in here my own accord? How do I drive the rental van back to Laurel, Delaware by myself? Meet my wife at the restaurant to have a wonderful breakfast. Walk into the ER with about 30 some people that needed to be there, but I didn't. How is it possible that the statement Mr. Parsons, you are a very sick man. How was that even possible? Here's how it was possible. And you know this. He saw something I could never see. He knew something I did not know. And that hard pill truth challenged my life, saved my life. I want Jesus to take blood samples of Park Lane. Yeah, yeah. I want the Holy Ghost yes. to give us his diagnosis as he x-rays our congregation. I want us as a congregation to move forward in the name of Christ and find out where the round wheels are. Let's put them on the cart. Let's ask the Holy Ghost to be behind us, yes. before us, beside us. The Holy Ghost, please grow us until the trumpet sounds, or you can call us home. And let's stand together. God bless you. Father, I thank you this morning for the growth that you have destined for this congregation. I bless you for the miracle power within the diagnosis. I thank you for helping us, Lord, to pick out the health team of this church, allowing us to pick out those 30 people who will be honest with you and with themselves and with this congregation and will actually take a survey that will assess and give us a diagnosis of where we are as a congregation. Yes. Lord, I thank you for favor. I thank you for blessings. I thank you for confidence. And most of all, I thank you for a healthy church. This time next year, Lord, as we move towards the goals of what you're going to give us, I bless you for this place having no space but being filled up. with healthy people, with healthy processes, with healthy purposes. God, would you do your individual work as only you can? And Holy Spirit, would you do your collective work as only you can? Would you pull together the team that will bring the health diagnosis to this church? And the team that will take us forward to being the church and redeeming the potential that you have in this body. I bless you for it and I praise you for it because I ask in the mighty matchless name of our Lord who said, this is my church, my church. and the gates of hell shall not will not will prevail against it. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week talking about natural church development. Choir practice immediately following some of the folks leave. Holy Spirit. God bless.